Good morning, New York. Hey there strangers on the internet and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a small glimpse into my glamorous life as I struggle to stay completely sane whilst living in the socially isolating disease filled city that is Manhattan. I would like to think that I'm woken up every morning by my alarm clock but the reality is I'm usually startled awake by either rush hour traffic or the sound of construction. Whoever said living on a main avenue was fun, boy did they mean it. I try to keep up the habit of making my bed in the morning because when I was little, my mother told me if I didn't, bugs would crawl into my bed. And now I wonder where my crippling fear of bugs came from. Thanks, mom. Oh, by the way, I made these pillows. And then I make my way to the bathroom, but of course, checking for, you guessed it, rats and roaches again before entering the common space because yes, this has happened before. Ugh, cute. All my blind people know the daily struggle to determine whether you will decide to look like a masculine Harry Potter for the day or stick little pieces of plastic onto your eyeballs. And I ultimately decide to go with eye penetration. Next, I once again make the bold decision of not brushing my hair for the day because eh, it doesn't look so bad. The one thing that really wakes me up in the morning is drinking a lot of water, which I do while listening to the scary sounds that start coming out of the giant metal pole in the middle of the room. This is me looking around for a clean pot and my version of cleaning the one on the stove. And of course, a Starbucks cup to convince myself, yes, this is the same as a tall vanilla latte with almond milk. Oh my God, I poured the whole thing in the cup without scalding myself, go me. My all time favorite tea is the yo- Oh my God, I ran out of tea. Well, another failed attempt at getting my life together. Oh my God, I remembered I have some in my room. <laughs> Like I was saying, my favorite tea of all time is the Yogi Greed Tea Kombucha. I don't know why it's kombucha, it doesn't taste like kombucha, but whatever, I like it. Prosperity is within us. As I try to fit my tripod through my door, it's time to pick out an outfit. New York City has only three types of weather. Suffocatingly hot, brick titties cold, and windy rain. I literally have worn this shirt the last five days in a row. It doesn't matter because I don't see anybody because it's coronavirus and I don't actually have to interact with other humans and I just go to my apartment and I go to my mom's house and back and today I'm gonna go to the office and maybe one person will see me in the shirt but I'll probably wear it again tomorrow. Damn, look at that smooth transition. Next I'll put on some music to jam out to while doing my makeup. Again, not gonna bore you with a makeup routine but I'll quickly show you some of the products I use day to day. I never like wearing a lot of makeup, so it's usually just moisturizing, a light powder, mascara, and eyebrows, of course. Here's me trying to make fun of beauty vloggers while I hold the mascara tube upside down. Also, can someone please let me know if these thick headbands are in style? I have like a whole collection from middle school I'm trying to break out. After I'm done looking like a human, I trip over my tripod, and head back to my room. Alexa, play Alt 92.3 radio. When I have a few minutes before I have to leave for the office, I like to lay in bed with my journal while listening to the radio. I'll do some writing or reflecting and track my habits such as sleep and exercise. Wow, I have a lot of free time on my hands. I grab my completely obnoxious orange bag and add the finishing touches to my chic look with sneakers and trying to keep my shirt tucked into the back of my pants. Since my roommate and I have opposite schedules, we like to write notes to each other about our plans for the day. And we're off to work. Yes, I did film myself fake leaving for work. I lock up to keep the burglars out and make my way down four flights of stairs. Check for cockerinos in the lobby and head out the door. head down to the subway, fumble around trying to get my metro card out, and then get pissed off that the escalator is broken again. Good thing it's only downhill. When I moved to New York City, I wanted to make a promise to myself to be more aware and present. So instead of sitting on my phone, I like to listen to music on the subway, people watch, and give dirty looks to the man in front of me not wearing a mask.
My office is located in Union Square, which I love. And I normally work from home during these times, but I like to come in occasionally to be more productive than usual. Ew, don't touch the turnstile, you dumb dumb. Ah, the smell of pollution in the morning. Ninety-nine percent of the time, the office is dead empty, which can get lonely, but it's nice to relax and have the space to yourself. The one exception is one of my studio directors who comes in often and thinks my name is Chelsea. Hey, how are you? I've been working here for about a year and a half, and I'm still trying to find ways to subtly tell her my name is not Chelsea. Around lunchtime, or when I start getting bored and can't pay attention to my screen anymore, I head out to grab some lunch. I've been craving by Chloe for months now. It's a vegan fast food place, so I decided to go- What? Okay, I just want to say that was the most dis disappointing thing of 2020 so far. That store literally just opened a couple of months ago. Plan B. Spend $12 on my fancy salad addiction at Sweetgreen. I am single-handedly keeping this business afloat. Uh, bread, yes, thank you. Ninety percent of the time, I like to bring my reusable silverware, but I did forget it today. So here's a shot of me killing the world. Sweet Green claims their stuff is compostable, but I don't know how accurate that actually is. And around 4:30, I decide to beat rush hour and finish working from home. At this point, I'm so thankful I decided to wear sneakers today. Have you been keeping track of how many staircases I've climbed today? My ass should look a hell of a lot better than it currently does. A typical work from home setup usually looks like this. Maximum comfort, minimal efficiency. And if you're wondering, yes, this is a carrot shirt and yes, I've had these leggings since I was 15. After work is done, I like to get shredded. To stay in tip top shape, I like to do two and a half girly pushups, four mountain climbers, followed by flailing my legs around in the air. My neighbors below me hate me. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you would know that I've been trying to get my splits for like my entire life. So mostly what I do is stretch for them. Ignore the crotch pillows. I have to say, I think I'm pretty close. Next, I sit on my phone until I decide to get up and find something to eat for dinner. Except I normally don't have anything to cook because I barely live in my apartment anymore because of coronavirus and I've been working from home 90% of the time. So if that's the case, why would I choose to do that in my tiny New York apartment when I can go back to my home with my family and have like actual space and access to the outdoors? So there's no point in buying a bunch of groceries that are just going to go bad in my fridge a few days later once I head back to the city to live with my parents on Long Island. But I don't want to eat out for every meal because this year has really put me into a state of financial anxiety. So I usually just sit around and stare at my cabinets until I ultimately decide whatever I can find. So soup or a can of beans or junk food or whatever. I think I need to go to the supermarket. I put on what seems to be like the only sweatshirt I own, grab my reusable bags, and walk a few blocks to Whole Foods. Uh, Whole Foods to vegans is like an adult toy shop for sex addicts. It really gets me going sometimes, but not in a weird way, in a I can't stop buying expensive organic produce kind of way. I head home to walk back up four flights of stairs. Oh my God, who on earth thought building an apartment with four flights of stairs was a good idea? Now present to you an awkward montage of me sexually putting away my groceries. <laughs> Please do not unsubscribe. The pressure of the pandemic has clearly been tough on me. This is what my life has come to. You know, I was gonna make dinner. Let's make cookies instead. To make these cookies, you are gonna need half of the correct ingredients and any random remaining types of flour in your cabinets to mix together. After the mystery flour mixture, I'm adding some mystery vanilla my mom picked up from the Dominican Republic. 
Everyone knows that cookies have sugar, but do you ever bake something and think, holy shit, it does not feel this good to be pouring this much sugar into something I'm gonna eat the whole try of? Just a warning, this is not an actual correct recipe I normally use, but if you're interested in me showing you how I actually make amazing vegan and gluten-free cookies, let me know down in the comments. And finally, to close out the day, I drink alone, eat my subpar cookies, and either do some video editing or play The Sims for hours on my laptop. Thank you guys again for watching. I'm definitely gonna be posting a lot more consistently, so subscribe to my channel for more and check back every Monday for a new video. Stay safe and sane, everyone.